Hi guys, this is a video on Windows software. This time I'm talking about running Linux applications natively on the Windows desktop. Now, I didn't think this was possible, but it is possible and someone's come up with it. And if you don't know what I just said, Linux is basically an open source operating system that's free to download and you can install it. However, if you don't want to go through the hassle of installing it and you just want to try out the Linux applications or install Linux applications, you can get them so they run on your Windows desktop and they will appear in the taskbar and run as if it was an in, a, a, a Windows application. So how did I f come across this? Well I started looking at Cooperative Linux and the next program is based on this because it's um, Cooperative Linux is a port of the Linux kernel that allows it to run cooperatively alongside another operating system on a single machine. For instance it allows one to freely run Linux on Windows 2000 XP and actually Vista which it doesn't show, without using a commercial PC virtualization such as VMware. So, what they've come up with, if you before you go and download CoLinux and start trying to mess about with it, it's very difficult to install, well I found it was anyway, I couldn't get it working, so there's now something called AND Linux, which is a lot simpler, all you have to do is install it basically, and it works. And it says, it, unfortunately it only supports 32-bit versions, so you have to find out if your version is 32-bit. Most are, but some people use 64-bit Windows. So as you can see, it uses CoLinux and it uses an, a, an a Ubuntu kernel, I think, Ubuntu um, distribution even. So uh, let's get started. Now, uh, ironically, um, with the cooperative Linux, it says it allows it to freely run without using commercial software such as VMware. I'm actually going to show you this inside VMware. So let's get started. And um, I, I'm unable to install VMware tools on, on this machine. I'm hoping the screen recorder is following my mouse as I do this. But what I've done is I've downloaded and Linux. This is the KDE version. You get a minimal or a KDE version. I've downloaded the KDE version. And um, basically, it's about 600 megabytes and it will install Linux on your Windows operating system. So let's just run it. Uh, this is in beta 1, so it's very early in development, um, but it's like uh, really new. So uh, I apologize if the screen recorder isn't following me. I'm going to accept license agreement. Oh dear. <laughs> Come on, screen recorder. Right. We're going to install it to C program Linux. Now, you'll notice it says, please select how much memory you want to use for and Linux. Obviously, you need enough memory to run both operating systems in one go. So, I'm going to... I've got 768 megabytes uh, dedicated to my virtual machine. So, I'm going to dedicate 384, half of it. So, I'm going to say next. Do you want to enable sound? Yes. You've got mail. Excuse that. And I'm going to run it automatically as an NT service. So if you want, don't want to immediately dedicate it when you start your computer up, you just say run manually in a command prompt or as an NT service. So I'm going to say next. Um, you can get it to access your Windows drives using Samba. Uh, actually, I'm going to set this up to show you how it works. Uh, unfortunately, I'm going to have to pause the video in a minute when it goes to set it up because it takes about 10 minutes. So what I'm doing is I'm creating, if I go next on this, so it says name of the Windows file share. Please create a share folder and re enter the requested information. I'm really sorry about this screen recorder, it's starting to annoy me. So I'm just going to go sharing and share it, and enable file sharing and share the folder on the network and call it shared. I'm going to OK it. I'm going to see shared here. Username D, password D, repeat the password D, that doesn't matter at the moment. Install into the and Linux start menu folder, and I'm just going to leave all these blanks. So you can see that you can have Kmail, Kcontact, Korganizer all running through Quick Launch. So I'm going to next that and install. And you'll notice that it has started installing. Now what I'm going to do is uh, pause the video now because it takes 5 to 10 minutes to do this. And once it's, as soon as it, this progress bar is filled up, I'll come back. So I'll speak to you in a second. Hi oh guys, we're back and it's now asking me to install a TAP Win32 adapter. Now this is the virtual adapter that will help you run the Linux uh, part of the operating system. It's now asking me to restart the computer. Now this is why I couldn't show you on my actual system because the screen recorder would stop. So it's now going to restart and hopefully um, as I selected it to automatically run the Linux part as a service, it will start up and show. And eventually you'll see something in the corner. Now I tested this um, just a second ago and I had to wait a while 
for it to actually, con I must configure itself or something because when it first starts, I'll show you, it comes up with an error um, when you try and launch an application, but I left it for a while. Um, I think it might just be because of the first start. Now, uh, and Linux has a forum here. Uh, it doesn't seem to be very popular at the moment. A lot of things are new, a lot of the posts are new. The admin seems to have posted quite a lot of information on it. So you'll now notice we have a little K in the um, in the start in the uh, system tray even. So I'm going to quit this these really irritating um, pop-ups from Windows XP. It will say antivirus in a second. So you'll notice that you now have over here. Come on, screen recorder. The and Linux console, which you can use. I think it's to debug things, or uh, I'm not sure. Um, so um, the the, if you try and do this in, ver in VMware and try not to install VMware tools into your machine because it messes about with the networking because it relies on networking to use the Linux part. So you notice I had an XMing thing that pop up and it said unblock it. So I've unblocked it and we're going to cancel this. And if I try to run an application now, you'll see we've got all these applications here. Um, the screen recorder is starting to irritate me, so I'm going to try and open up the console. And you'll notice that it says, could not launch console, could not connect to 192.168.111. So that is basically trying to connect to my virtual networking thing. Now, if I leave this for about two minutes, um, or I don't think I've got two minutes, uh, a minute or something, and we'll try back, and we'll f it should work. So the news here, as you can see, February the 12th, it's in beta 1 RC6, which means it's almost final. So you can download this for free. I'll provide the download link to this in the description in the description. And uh, that's about it really. Um, uh, what else have we got? Installation, but installation was fairly easy as you could see. All you had to do is a couple of steps. Uh, no, we didn't get that, did we? I think this is just an old version that is talking about. Okay, so we'll try one more time and hopefully the screen recorder will follow me. I'm going to try and open the console again and it's chugging away. It may do something. I apologize if this is slow. It's because it's inside a virtual machine. If you try it on your desktop it should launch a lot quicker. So we're either going to get an error message again or it's actually going to start. If not I would have just wasted about eight minutes on the video. And moment of truth and we have a console and you can see it's running inside a Windows window <laughs> and uh, you can do all your stuff for Linux in this shell here so we right click again as you can see all these uh, different programs here I'm going to start, I don't know, uh, K-Word and you'll notice that I can still use Windows applications so I'll start up my computer it still runs as my computer and yeah apologies for the fact that it's slow in the virtual machine but you can see we now have KWord inside Windows and there's no virtual machine running or other than the one I'm showing you <laughs> and uh, if you want to install new things you just go onto here and you click the synaptic and it's much like the Linux package manager where you can download your extra software and it should all work within Windows so here we have the synaptic package manager, I apologise for my crappy speech, and uh, eventually when it starts, apparently uh, it, it's not completely there, so it's a little bit buggy, and you'll see we've got all these things down here, and all the packages. So this is how to get Windows applications and Linux applications running on the same operating system, which is Windows. So um, avoid the uh, installing of if you want to try this in VMware to begin with, or if you just want to go ahead and install it on your operating system, this is easy to uninstall so you don't have to worry about anything. And you, if you have problems with the virtual networking thing, they've got support forums here, and they've got other things talking about uh, Linux, Linux newbies even. And that's about it really. I'm quite pleased that I managed to get it installed in a virtual machine just to show you. And it's very exciting stuff because now you can run Linux applications inside Windows without the use of VMware or any virtual machine software. So thanks for watching my video. Uh, please comment, rate, subscribe if you like my videos. And thanks again.